Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Asking. The United Nations is indeed um, a very significant um, institution for Africa. Across this continent, a significant population who've been neglected by development policies. We need to start holding our government to account. We need to have governance systems that are, that, that, that are built with integrity, that, can, that, that, that can, cannot be changed. Look at, let's look at what happened recently in Nigeria. Africa is known as an aid-dependent continent. Is the aid given to African countries helping Africa? I think the aid given to African countries is distracting from the other resources we have. When a country needs help, that means it's not able to take care of every, the other things it needs to take care of. You know, when a country needs money, needs help, it means it's, it, it, it's assumed it does not have time to look at, explore economic opportunities. I believe aid distracts from the other ways the continent is being exploited or the continent is allowing itself to be exploited. Aid is supposed to, I think, be that. It's aid. It helps you. The assumption is that there's something there already. It's not achieving the goal. It's intended to achieve. So what is going wrong? If it's helping Africa, Africa should help itself, number one. You know, no country has developed by aid. No country will develop by aid. You will not be self-sustaining by aid. It's, it's a simple logic, you know. And, um, but we have... I think we have economies that have been built on the, some, uh, on the kind of temporal basis. It's really on, on, thin, on thin ice, really, if I can use that word, because it's based on aid. You know, so is the, is the aid Africa, I don't think, being used widely, I don't think we should depend on it. I think aid cannot be sustainable, as a, cannot sustain a country's development. That's why we don't grow. You give it for a while, you withdraw it. I work here and I see projects that are running, they suddenly stop because the aid has been stopped. You know, it's all over this continent. We base, the, the, there's too much happening in this continent that are based on, on aid. And we forget to tap into the resources we have inside. We build strategies, we develop work plans and, and national budgets and national strategies on false, on false, on false, on, 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 on what we don't have, on promises sometimes. We adjust our national policies based on the promise of aid. Some people have proposed that we need more aid to develop sustainable structures. But, that, but that, isn't that what's been happening? We've done that. As we get money for food aid, we still get money for other governance, governance issues for training. It's just not sustainable. I don't think you can build a mission by aid. And I think um, we've had books written that's, you know, and sadly to the, inter the notion, there's a strong belief that aid is never given you know, for the well-being of the continent anyway. You know, it can't be. It's, uh, we have books that have been written on that. So aid actually as a, as a kind of a, an inter as a international aid is coming under a lot of scrutiny and it's, not, it, it, it's, it's distrusted right now. But I, I think that's ne neither here nor there. You have, we have to find ways that work for us. We have to develop at our own pace. And having foreign assistance that creates a false sense of direction or props you higher than you are really is a problem. So I don't think it's given necessarily for the wrong intention to manipulate or the whole notion of conspiracy theory intentionally to bring you down or cheat you. I believe it creates a false sense of development and it's never sustainable. It's always aid stops. Nobody gives you aid permanently forever. So when it stops, you crash. And there's a lot of crashes that happen. You, there's this amount of money being given by a particular Western government. It's given for five years, or given with promises it might continue, then it stops. I've seen it happen. Very major significant programs in the region have stopped midway because the aid was withdrawn. I've seen it happen in my present job. And you're looking for partners you've been working with, suddenly they can't work on this anymore because the, our funders stopped funding. The old financial crisis in Europe, for instance, had an impact in a lot of programs that were being run in Africa. We cannot depend on aid. We cannot depend on aid. You know, it's, uh, it's not sustainable. I think for Africa, we need to change it. I think the mind, the mind is changing. I always say, 
I believe, I say this a lot, it's one thing I preach, it's not about resources, it's about how you use it, it's about your point of view. We have to change our point of view because we do have the resources here. We do have the resources here, but we don't, uh, um, it's the way we look at what we have. What sort of aid does Africa need? Africa needs the relaxation of Western pro um, um, protectionist laws. There's a lot of laws that protect. We need markets open for exportation for Africa. What we need is economic support. Africa needs economic partnership. We need better trade partnership. That's aid. That's, yes, relax your laws a little bit if you want to help. Open markets up for our goods. Let's be able to export. Support us in that export, in being able to export. We need economic partner, partnership. We don't need aid. You can't justify your aid at this time. It's failed. We've had it for how many years? Decades it failed. We need better economic opportunities. You cannot be giving 10 million to a country where you have international laws that stops them from exporting and they lose a billion a year based on some of the laws you have. You know, you can't dump excess food from your country into another country and ruin the market and call that aid. You know, so like I said, we have concrete details and numbers in all this, but this is a general view, it's not scapegoating. The fact is aid, yes, is given visually as some kind of support, but there are laws that actually make that aid irrelevant to the development of the country that is being given to. We need economic partnership, we need economic opportunities, we need markets relaxed. That's, and, and you can sometimes look at a neighbor and say, it's challenging for you, my neighbor. I can relax some of this law so we trade better and you get more benefit to get back on your feet. That's, that's aid, that's supporting, building, supporting in a way that respects the dignity of people you're dealing with. So what do you think is the quality of the film from Nigeria? I mean, we consider them as industry leaders within Africa. Um, there, there are a lot of films that are really high in production. They put in so much money in it and the quality is perfect. They shoot it on Red One and IRI cameras and whatnot. Then we have the home video where they just shoot, and throw it into the market, sell it for 20 naira, 50 naira, it's gone. First of all, we need to set our priorities right. And then achieving something like quality education is a collective effort. Do you see any gain in Africans doing business with each other? We are, we are doing that. I believe very strongly, you know, in, in, in cultural exchanges, opening doors. We have that happening now. For once, in the last 10 years, Africans are watching themselves on TV. A lot of the programs Kenyans watch are from the continent. I know this because I'm in Kenya. Nigerians are now watching movies about each other. Because culturally, we're getting to know each other. And I think from that, we're talking tourism. They need to promote, you know, incontinent tourism. You know, so Af Nigerians need to know, for instance, that Kenya has the, some of the best, so, you know, holiday, coastal holiday spots, beaches in the world. We need to promote that to Nigerians and invite Nigerians to come. Kenyans need to go into the Nigerian market as well. We, 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 that is happening. The ideas are popping up, but it's happening through cultural exchanges. People are now more curious about going to Nigeria. You know, I hear that a lot. I would love to visit Nigeria. Nigerians need to come to Kenya. They have beautiful holiday spots. So that kind of internal business is going to happen. This is a time of hope for the continent. Why we talk about some of the challenges, you know, I, I, I say for years I used to stand on platforms and argue against the need to, to address Nigeria image. Well, it's not as bad as we think. The Nigeria image is important. Africa image matters. I had an NGO where I talked about Africa image matters. We need image matters. The way people perceive you, we need to rebrand Africa. We need all that for economic opportunities. Then woke up one day, it's happening. It's happening through art. It's happening through the entertainment industry. So we have a generation that are ready, that are doing it their way, the African way. And that's come through music, that's come through art. We need to look at business the African way. We need to look at development the African way. Because some of the development parts that are playing out in the West are not working for the Westerners. You know, there's something to be said about human quest for joy and fulfillment that does not necessarily come from the Western model of development. That's why Africans need to look inward. We are doing it our way through music. We are doing it our way through entertainment. We're going to do it our way through, uh, through business. Through, 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 uh, the development model needs to find new ways. And that's why I bring in the issue of the pastoralists who are really, I'm really passionate about. Sedentarization, having people steal may not be the only way to utilize a land that cannot be used. We cannot push Western development models on a particular continent. That's what's happened. It's shown that it has failed. There has to be a way we we model it, and I believe 
when we get to that, and sadly it will come through failed development models, we've had a few series of them in the continent, in it we're finding new ways. Through that we're finding new ways, and I think it's going to come. So it's a time of hope after some time of pain. Now look at democracy, for instance. Okay, maybe we need to find a new name for the way we describe democracy in the continent. Instinctively, we want to say, okay, if you have a, a, a government, you have some conflict after a particular election, then you resolve it by putting everybody to rule anyway. Giving, maybe that's the African way. Maybe we should be bold enough and because we wear a Western heart and criticize it. Democracy, I do it. Democracy should follow this path. After an election, you have one president, one prime minister, you follow the path. It has not worked in this continent. It, let's call it spade a spade. Maybe the kind of reconciliation we're having right now might be the path. We need to be bold to explore new, the new ways, ways that are working for us in the continent and promote them. Because at the end of the day, we want peace. We want a, a continent where of proud Africans, you know, a continent of, 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 of happy Africans where families are thriving. We, that's what we want for the next, the coming generation. And the bottom line is to, to, to go towards that path, not promote a model that, might, might, that, that just might not work. If it's Christian leaders, we carry out training to empower the church to become an element in development of the nations. A child learns love through its parents' love, as well as the love that it gets from its parents. A successful person, without a successful success, is a successful failure. One area I will ask your opinion is on Africans in diaspora. You are one. You've lived in America, Canada, Europe, and now you live in Kenya. What will you say is the contribution of Africans in diaspora to the development of the continent? Through the, I lived abroad, like I said, why Nigeria went through some very challenging times. You know, the whole struggle with military rule, I was outside, a whole struggle towards democracy, and I think we're stabilizing, I was outside. The diaspora is uh, sometimes I say when in a battle you need people who have a strength when you're weak. There were times I think internally Nigerians were tired and those of us in diaspora were giving voice to some of the issues there. In some of the recent developments you hear you have demonstrations outside, peaceful ones, to draw attention to some of the challenges. You know, to so some of the challenges. Um, and we cannot undermine the role the diaspora played around the whole economic, when we, as Nigeria struggled. You know, for a while, it was bad economically. I, I would say Nigeria is a rich country. We've not managed the wealth well. The diaspora, I worked. I remember at one point, I was literally sending money home to keep my family. So we played a role in that sense economically. The diaspora role, as in, around the world, people are calculating for Ghana and the rest of the world, the money that is sent into the country from the diaspora you know, it's a significant development fund now that helps the country. So that's a huge. And you have Nigeria that's done even further and has started having a former representative voice in the house from the diaspora. So it's recognized as a significant, really significant part of development. And we are coming home. And Nigeria did something really smart and started welcoming the diaspora back home. And I know Nigerians around who are, who are going back home to settle. So the diaspora has never left. In fact, I don't use that word. I say they are Nigerians abroad, you know? Mm -hmm. So they've never left and they are coming back and they are, they've always supported and, um, and um, it's the same for South Africa, for instance, the diaspora actually went back and, and were able to support, you know, as well. So we play, we play a key role and we still do. What's your take on the Niger Delta? And what's your advice to African countries who have just discovered oil? It has, number one, it has to be the, the, its role. I believe <clears throat> when oil is discovered, like what happened to Nigeria, we discovered oil to the detriment of every other resources in the country. We did not, dis we did not, um, we did not develop any other areas. And we know we, have a, we, we can have a thriving agricultural economy. We had, we're exporting granite at that time. I don't know where we stand at that. We focus on oil to the detriment of every other res resources. And that's part of the challenge we have right now. The whole struggle, the whole our subsidy challenge, the battle we're fighting is over oil and it has been so for Nigeria. The Niger Delta has suffered. 
you know, I tell people that I remember very well, I was about 10, and my aunt who farmed, it had, you know, you had oil spillage close to said, ah, they, 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 somebody said that they, they, they found something around their land and they gave them some money for the land, a group of women. I think it was about $5. Yes, you know. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's created, we know, we know the history of Niger Delta and the level of human rights abuse. I would say for countries that are discovering it, they are, they are better putting down a national policy that this oil will contribute only this amount to national red revenue, to GDP. They have to manage it. You have to deliberately manage it so you can develop the other areas of your economy. Because if the oil is on a particular ethnic land, it's always, you always have a people who come from that part of the country and they always will feel abused. They will always expect some level of a benefit extra benefit from that oil being found in their land. So you're already automatically going to have a people already who feel fragmented from the country. So there's always that resentment. Oil will produce some level of internal discord if you don't manage it well. I don't know if anywhere in Southern Sudan, they, have, they bear the whole struggle there, oil. So you must sit, I believe, having a policy that says only this percentage of the GDP will come from oil. Controlling it means you can develop other areas and not rely too much on it. I think we we'll, we'll help. Therefore, definitely for Nigeria, I think that would help. It might force, it might not be too late now, but it might force the development of the other areas of our economy, which we've neglected for oil's sake.